Welcome back to Ranger Made Knives. I'm Bob, and today we're talking about anodizing titanium. Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about anodizing and I'm just going to show you how I do things. Uh, there's a lot of other techniques that you can learn along the way, but to start out I'm going to keep things basic. I'm going to show you the equipment I use and how I prep the materials and uh, some very basic aspects of anodizing. So starting out with equipment, what you see here is a 120 volt 1 amp DC power supply and this is probably the most important thing for getting started. As you can see this one comes from Circuit Specialties and I'll put a link to this thing in the description below. So you're also going to need an electrolyte bath. The way I've set this up is I'm using a large Tupperware. Inside is a uh, screen It's made out of plastic and it came from a craft store and it's for cross stitch. Um, also, you'll see a plate in there, and that is niobium attached with a titanium wire to the negative lead of the power supply. The electrolyte I'm using is distilled water with trisodium phosphate dissolved into it. About half a cup to three quarters of a cup of TSP into half a gallon of distilled water. And I use this because it's the safest electrolyte that I could come up with. These little part hanging hooks are made from 20 gauge niobium wire and I got that from reactivemetals.com. There's a link in the description below. All right, a real quick word on multi-etch. It definitely serves a place and I do use it occasionally, but I don't use it on every part I make. And I probably will not use it in this video, but just be warned, it's a very caustic solution and you need to be careful, take protective measures when you're using it. And the reason I don't use it is because it tends to dull the face of the material. Its purpose is to remove an oxide layer to give you clean exposed titanium. But putting a fresh surface finish on your material will do the same thing and you won't get the dulling that's caused by the multi-etch. Here you can see I'm putting a fresh 800 grit sanded finish on one side of this liner. And here's a quick tip before I jewel these liners. You can dress the Kratex drum with an old piece of 50 grit blaze belt. One of the uh, nicest features about jeweling the inside of the liners is that sparkly finish and that's why I don't use multi-etch. The Kratex gives me a nice fresh abrasive finish that has that sparkle to it and then if I go straight into the anodizing I get that shine. Alright so now that I've got my surface finishes applied and I'm ready to prep for the anodizing all I do is wipe everything down with acetone. I want to get any sanding dust and any oxides that may just be laying on the surface removed. So I just give it a good wipe down and then I will hang it by the niobium hook and I'm ready to go into the electrolyte bath. I'm going to start out anodizing my favorite color to use on liners, which is a bronze, and that's achieved at about 15 volts. So I start off just giving the liner a quick rinse in some distilled water, and then it's ready to go into the electrolyte. I will connect the positive lead, and then plunge it down into the electrolyte and the anodizing starts immediately. After a few seconds we've got a nice rich bronze color. Then it goes back into the rinse for a second and then I'll clean the liner up with Windex. There tends to be a little bit of a, like a gray haze that shows up while you're anodizing and I found that the Windex helps to cut that out. So 
One of the things that's really interesting about anodizing titanium is that you can increase the voltage and re-anodize. So I can change the color. I've got this bronze and now I'm going to go to a blue. So 26.5 volts is where I get the nicest blue. The process is exactly the same, but I have found that the higher the voltage you go, the longer it needs to stay in the electrolyte. Part of this may be the fact that I only have a one amp power supply. I'm probably going to be upgrading soon to a three amp, but the one amp has served me well for years. And there's that nice blue. Do a little bit of cleanup and then it'll look like this. Then we can achieve two color anodizing by removing some of the blue and going back to a lower voltage. So right now I'm going to sand off the blue on the edge of the liner and then we'll take it back and anodize at 15 volts. and now we've got the nice blue on the jeweled side and the bronze on the edge. That's going to do it for today's video on anodizing. If you got any questions, put them in the comment section below and I will answer them. As always, stay safe in the shop. This is Ranger Made Knives, out.